परमहंस श्री नित्यानंद और स्वामी जी इज अ रेवोल्यूशनरी स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर ऑफ आर मिलेनियम ही वॉक्स ऑन अ मिशन टू हील द वर्ल्ड थ्रू द पावर्स ऑफ मेडिटेशन Swamiji chose to be born as Rajashekaran in the sacred town of Tiruvannamalai in southern India mastering yoga and rigorous spiritual practices at a young age Rajashekaran finally left home for the Himalayas in the quest of the ultimate truth this quest led his feet to the holiest of pilgrimage spots and to great spiritual masters in India and Tibet After years of wandering, study and intense penance, the boy Rajasekharan experienced the ultimate flowering of consciousness on January 1st, 2000. Rajasekharan became Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda. Guided by a divine vision, Swami ji set up Dhyana Peetha, a worldwide movement for meditation in Bidadi near Bangalore in India. At the ashram, seekers aged between 8 and 18 live and learn in the master's presence shri vakratunda mahakaya koti surya samapra ananda healing a unique healing science formulated by swami ji has been baffling the medical world by curing diseases ranging from migraine to cancer qualified individuals are also initiated by swami ji into ananda healing today there are over 300 healing centers and over 700 healers worldwide the ananda spurana program is an intensive workshop for chakra healing and meditation that brings together philosophies and techniques from the world's major spiritual streams the nityananda spurana program or nsp is an advanced level course where participants work on all their seven energy bodies ananda yoga is an introductory program to help integrate meditation into our normal lifestyle with practical and powerful techniques to cope with work stress ill health and failing relationships swami ji also reaches out to people with dhyana satsangs or mass meditation camps that take meditation to the remotest towns and villages of india swami ji travels the world committed to spreading awareness about the role of individual transformation in shaping global communities with a pragmatic vision that links eastern philosophy to the western scientific thought swami ji continues to awaken humanity to the significance of spirituality in our time
actually subjective. Being subject miraculous. From the time immemorial, human beings are searching continuously what we call miracles, extraordinary happenings. Almost all the religions, all the spiritual groups, all the spiritual societies are answers for the great happenings in the planet Earth, which can't be explained logically. There are so many thousands of things happening, which is beyond logic. Whenever anybody tries to explain the things which is beyond logic, he creates a new religion. All our search, all our seeking, all our effort to find solution, to find answer for what is happening beyond our logic, what we call miracles. All our effort to demystify the miracles created new, new, new religions, different kinds of spiritual theories, different kind of <coughs> understanding about these energies. First let us understand the word miracle. There is nothing on this planet Earth which is miracle actually. Padanjali declares very clearly the greatest spiritual navigator ever born on the planet Earth. Padanjali Padanjali is a person who declared first time there is no such thing as miracle happens in the planet Earth. Whatever happens has got clear cause. Cause and effect. If you do not know the cause, then you think it is miracle. You think it is something extraordinary. If you know the cause, you understand this cause and effect. If you do not know the cause, you always think it is miracle. Patanjali is the great spiritual navigator master who declared everything has got cause and there is nothing called miracle. He demystified the whole science and in a way he made the whole spirituality as a science which is possible in everyone's life. By nature man has got inquisitiveness, the curiosity to search in extraordinary things. That is why, from the time immemorial, again and again and again, we are searching something extraordinary, something supernatural. We don't keep quiet, we just living the basic life. We want something more, something more, something more. So we search what is happening, what is happening in the planet Earth, what is happening in the sky, what is happening beyond, 
the search for the miracles continues. Patanjali is the first Rishi who declared to open all the secrets, to open all the truths. He makes it as a science which way, through which technique you can achieve which miraculous powers. First thing he guides the people to achieve miracle powers. Next thing he teaches whatever is happening is miracle. He gives a two kind of solutions for life. First, to achieve, first he gives the techniques to achieve all the miracles. Next, he teaches what the technique to see everything as miracle. According to me, there is only two kind of lifestyle. One is living as though nothing is miracle or as though everything is miracle. There is only two kind of lifestyle. For both lifestyle, Padanjali gives methods. He illuminates a new path for human beings to travel. He shows a new way and he demystifies whatever we call as miracles. Step by step, step by step, he explains the different kind of miracles and how those energies can be achieved, how you can penetrate. Now, I wanted to analyze one or two things. Search for miracles, is it going to help us? First, let us analyze. Searching for these miracles, is it going to help us? In our practical day-to-day -day life. In a way, it can create inquisitiveness, it can create curiosity, it can give you the idea there is something beyond what you see with the five senses. It can give you an inspiration that there is something more than what you see on the planet Earth. As an inspiration to search the extraordinary thing, it is surely a big help. But just searching for miracles itself is no way going to help you. As a starting step, it can be a big inspiration to go towards the higher dimensions of life. That is what Padanjali says. When you start searching for miracles, when you start searching for extraordinary things, naturally you understand there is one more dimension for your life. There is something more in your life than you what you understand. But slowly, 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 you come to a clear understanding you come to a clarity, you come to a realization that even miracles are not enough. You need to go beyond the miracles. I always tell people, there are two things. One is Shakti to make your dreams into reality. That is what is miracle powers. Miracle power means you will have power to make your dreams into reality. That is Shakti. That is next thing, Buddhi. Means realizing whatever is reality is nothing but your dream. Making your dreams into reality is Shakti. Realizing that your reality is nothing but dream is Buddhi, intelligence. If your search for Shakti leads you to Buddhi, then it is right. 
if you search for miracles, if it leads you to experience whatever is happening is a miracle, then your search is right. But if your search stops just in few miracle powers, you miss the real miracle, which is universe, which is existence. The greatest miracle is realizing the whole universe in your being or your being in the whole universe. When you travel in your search for such of the miracles, when you start in your path, step by step you come upon few miracle powers. If your energy is getting solidified, in the second step you get the power of intuition. Intuition means seeing the things before it happens. People ask me, Swamiji, how can we see the things before it happens? It is just against the logic. It is just against the logic. How can we see before things happen? It is not against the logic. Because whatever you think as past or future is nothing but the projection of present. Now there is a new thing which is going on in the, among the sci physics scientists. A new talk, parallel universe. If black hole happens in some place, in some other, some other corner of the universe, Big Bang happens. Big Bang and black hole, they continuously happen, parallelly. Continuously somewhere black hole is happening. And the parallel side of the universe, the other side, same way Big Bang is happening. If the Big Bangs are happening, black holes are happening. When you don't know the connection, you think it is a two independent incident. If you understand the connection, you will understand it is not two separate incidences. It is just cause and effect, that's all. They say even a single atom, single atom cannot move without creating effect in the other side of the universe. If an atom moves in this, in a place, the other side, parallelly, another one atom moves. If you understand this parallel universe theory, you will be able to understand your future and past are not two independent things. They are just deeply related with the present. Understand the time as a shaft. Actually, time is a shaft. One side is past incidences. Other side is future incidences. Center, present. You never touch the time shaft, actually. You are always pulled in the past or by the future. You always live in the past or live in the future. You never touch the present moment. Present moment is the time through which you can touch this time shaft. Eternity is past, present and future. All the three is eternity. But you can touch the eternity only in the present moment. If you are in the present moment, only then you can touch the eternity. If you touch the eternity, you can understand the past and future are not different from present. They are just extensions of present. From the past moment, this moment is taking birth. From this moment, next moment is taking birth. If you have the glimpse at least once on the present moment, if you live even for one moment in the present moment, you will have a clear glimpse clear idea about the future. 
just yesterday in the Shakti Spurna program, one devotee questioned me, Swamiji, sometimes I feel when I am in a party, suddenly I feel the same party has happened in my life. I had been to the same house already once and I feel suddenly the same incident is happening and I feel in five minutes somebody is going to come or some incident is going to happen. Exactly in five minutes the same thing will happen. How this happens? Is it happening in only in my life or in everybody's life? How I am feeling like this? Then I asked, there were 80 people. I asked, how many of you have experienced the same thing in some time of your life, one or other time of your life? You will be surprised. More than 70% of the people raised their hands. And they say, all of us had this experience in some time in our life. If you enter into some house, suddenly you feel, I just came to the same house. And you know which side which room is. And you straight go there. The same incident. Yesterday I was surprised in the 80 people. Majority of the people had this experience in their life at least more than once. When you experience the present moment, at least once, by mistake, actually by mistake only we fall in the present. We never enter into present consciously. Because if you enter into present consciously, you will never move out of the present moment. You, by mistake, sometimes you suddenly fall into present moment. Your consciousness drops into present moment. You have nothing to bother, nothing to worry or nothing to think. In those moments only, you feel the glimpse of the future and you feel the same thing has happened already. In that moment, you touch the time shaft. You experience the glimpse of the time shaft. When you touch the time shaft, you experience the whole universe is nothing but the projection from present moment. Your past and your future is not two independent things. It is just deeply dependent on your present moment. <laughs> you will understand the bridge between your past and future. But we always miss. We always miss. We always miss the present moment. And not only that, not only we miss the present moment, we miss actual problem why we miss the present moment. We never look into the present moment. We always find, we try to find solution to wrong method, a small story. One American guy was traveling in London with a British gentleman and British lady. Both of them were sitting next to him in the train. The lady had a pet dog. Suddenly the dog jumped on him and pissed. <laughs> Made the whole area mess, dirty. Instead of apologizing, <coughs> this British lady she started patting the dog. Oh, you have cold bladder. I should take care of you. I should do something to you. After a few minutes, this dog jumped again on that American guy and vomited. <laughs> again, this lady, instead of apologizing, she started patting the dog. Oh, I should take you to the doctor immediately. You have some serious stomach trouble. After five minutes, again the dog jumped on him and now you know what it would have done. <laughs> it has done whatever it can do. Again this lady, instead of apologizing, she started patting the dog. 
How it is too much? The American guy simply got up, picked the dog, threw it out of the window. <laughs> simply threw it out of the window. Till this moment, the gentleman, British gentleman was keeping quiet. Now he started talking. You American guys, drive in the wrong side, measure with the wrong scale, now threw the wrong bitch out of the window. <laughs> you always throw the wrong bitch out of the window. We always try to find solutions by throwing the wrong bitch out of the window. In our life, whenever you find trouble in the past or in the future, you try to work by, al by trying to alter the past or by trying to work, develop on the future. But you cannot do both because both are not in your hands. You can't do anything about the past. It's already over. You can't do anything about the future because it is not yet happened. You can do anything only in the present moment. But you never do anything related to the present moment. Doing something which is related to present moment is what I call meditation. Meditation does not mean you will close your eyes and sit something, sit silently, chant some mantra. No. That is also one kind of meditation. But if you try to touch the present moment by any method, that is meditation. Any technique, any method which brings you to the present moment is meditation. If eating can bring you to the present moment, if you can eat staying in the present moment, that can become meditation. Simply walking, if it can bring you to the present moment, if you can be in the present moment when you walk, walking is meditation. Just sitting, if you can bring yourself to the present moment, it is meditation. Anything which brings you to the present moment only can solve your problems. But we always throw wrong bitch out of the window. Again and again we miss the right pitch. In your life, when you fall into the present moment, by mistake. You always fall in the present moment only by mistake. If you fall, you get the power of intuition. Whenever you feel, suddenly, the same incident happens. Next, this is what is going to happen. And if it happens, be very clear, you have touched the time shaft. You have touched the time shaft. Actually, if you can touch the time shaft more than 21 moment, 21 shana, shana means not second, it is not second. In Vedic system, time is calculated psychologically, not chronologically. There is two kind of times. One is chronological time, what west follows. Another one is psychological time, what east follows. Shana does not mean second. Please be very clear. Shana means the gap between one thought and the other thought. Shana means gap between one thought and the other thought. Let me explain the difference between psychological time and chronological time. Sometimes when you sit with somebody whom you really love and whose company you enjoy, you do not even know that five hours is gone. You do not even know how the time is flying. If you sit with somebody, you feel bored <laughs> or disturbed who tortures you. Even 10 minutes will not move. You will feel even a 10 minutes is a eternity. People say the eternal hell. Why? Because in the hell never time moves. In the hell never time moves. The number of thoughts, if it becomes more, you feel time is not moving. 
If the number of power becomes less, you will realize time is flying. So in the East, we always measure time based on the mental setup. Based on the mental setup. That is why we always tell for the higher level jivas, for devatas, our one year is one day for them. The one year of human beings is one day for devatas. Means the number of thought is very less. If the number of thoughts are very less, you will be in heaven. Please be very clear, heaven and hell are not geographical. If it is geographical, we would have sent every satellite. No, it is not geographical, it is psychological. The more number of thoughts you are in hell, less number of thoughts you are in heaven. It is by number of thoughts we measure whether we are in hell or in heaven. It is the psychological time which decides whether you are in hell or heaven. If time flies, if you are enjoying, you are in heaven. If the time is not at all moving, it is just stagnant, you feel bored, then you are in hell. It is just the psychological setup, not chronological. If you can hold the time shaft just for 21 minutes, just for 21 shana, not even minutes, 21 shana, the word minute cannot be the right translation of word shana, because the very meaning itself is different. If you can penetrate the time shaft consciously, 21 shana, you will know your whole future. You will know your whole future. Just 21 shana is more than enough to know the whole future. But we never penetrate the present moment. We never allow ourselves in the present moment. The morning, if you are brushing your teeth, you will be thinking of your office. If you are in the office, you will be thinking of evening going to the beach. If you are in the beach, you will be already planning of when to go back to the house. If you are in the house, again you will start planning about next day work. If you are here, you can be sure you are not here. <laughs> if you are here, one thing is sure, you are not here. You always escape from the present moment. Even if you don't have any worries to worry, even if you can't get any reason to worry, you just start planning for future. And I have seen people, if they don't find any reason to worry, they try their best to catch some reason. And if they can't find, the next step is, today everything is going well, Swamiji, I don't know what will happen tomorrow. <laughs> and we always believe very strongly, if today things go well, tomorrow something bad is going to happen. Something worse is going to happen. This very part, tomorrow something worse is going to happen. You are waiting for the worst thing to happen. You are practically meditating for the worst thing to happen. You are literally waiting to get hurt. When you beg to get hurt, naturally God graces you. <laughs> when you wait to get hurt, naturally He graces you. No other way. Otherwise, you find some reason and hurt yourself. When you don't have any past things to worry, you start creating something in the future to worry, to create. You never touch the present moment. You never penetrate the time shaft. That is why you never get the glimpse of the past or the future. When you touch the present, you experience the intuition power. In the next level, when your being becomes little more solid, in the next level of energy, you get a next power we call, which we call Siddhi, which we call the next Siddhi. The next Siddhi is altering the future. Understand? The first level Siddhi is knowing the future. In the first level Siddhi, you can only know the future. The next level experience, you get the power of altering the future. 
how this happens how this happens how can we change the future yesterday a devotee was asking so if there is a future how can we change the future if there is a free will where is the destiny if there is a destiny where is the free will understand one example there is a beautiful example by ramakrishna varamansa he says it's like a cow tied on a post the rope length is 5 meter inside the 5 meter cow has got free will it can sit stand go around do whatever it want but more than 5 meter the cow cannot go beyond the 5 meter it is destiny but inside the 5 meter it has got clear free will if the cow behaves properly if the cow doesn't do anything wrong if the cow lives properly silently not disturbing anybody there is every chance the owner will extend the length of the rope or free the cow totally same way the free will which is given to you if it is handled properly if it is used properly if you don't use it to hurt others or to hurt yourself please understand not only hurting others even hurting yourself is a sin when you continuously worry you are hurting yourself there is upanishad sutra anandam brahme dinavya janat ananda the bliss is existence don't waste it we are wasting our life without living the natural bliss which is our nature every moment which you spend which you live without being blissful is wasting your life and a deep disrespect to your life life itself is just a bliss the very nature of life is joy and bliss every moment you spend in suffering is a disrespect to the life please be very clear your real puja your real worship is living joyfully and blissfully somebody came and asked me swami ji in my house there is no peace please give me some technique some method to bring peace i told her first thing all of you sit together eat together spend time laugh dance naturally you will see you will have more understanding this bliss this joy will bring more and more peace don't find fault with each other continuously But just try to be blissful she said no no swami ji teach me some technique some puja which can help which can bring peace in my house puja can bring and it is done honestly and spiritually that is true she has no no teach me some puja should i do saundarya lakshmi or grah lakshmi which puja to bring peace she is not ready to listen to the solution then i said what generally you do when you go inside the puja room you do puja to lakshmi when you come out archana to husband how will the peace come how will you have the peace it is a life solution which you need to follow more than any other ritual the greatest puja is how to be blissful how to be more joyful every moment which you spend in worrying and suffering is disrespect to the life and god because he is the person who gave you the life if you disrespect a rose the person who gave you the rose you disrespect him also naturally when you disrespect a bunch of rose naturally you disrespect a person who gave you the rose so when you don't live with bliss naturally you disrespect the divine life is too valuable to be spent in suffering and 
misunderstand you. When you don't hurt yourself and hurt others, there is every chance the rope length can be extended from 5 meter to 10 or you can be liberated. The persons who are liberated are only called as Jivan Muktas. When you actually live in the present moment, you can never hurt yourself or you can never hurt others. When you live in the present moment, your being feels so much filled with the life. You will be flowering, you will be overflowing with so much of energy. You can never hurt others. You can never hurt yourself. All disturbances to yourself, to others, happens only in unconscious level. As long as you are unconscious, you will hurt others and you will hurt yourself. The moment you become conscious of what is happening inside your being, naturally you will stop hurting yourself and you will stop hurting others. Masochism and sadism is one and the same. If you hurt yourself, naturally you will hurt others. If you hurt others, naturally you will hurt yourself. Because you have only one mind, you don't have two mind. You have only one mind. It's like a double-edged sword. If you kill others, you will naturally commit suicide. If you try to commit suicide, you will naturally kill others. It is a double-edged sword. When you come to the present moment, when you start living in the present moment, you will see a new dimension of your being opens. You experience the new taste, new space of your being. When you experience the new space of your being, your past stops binding you. Your future starts listening to you. As long as your past binds you, your future will never listen to you. People come and ask me, Swamiji, I want to stop smoking. Please tell me something. I tell them, first thing you have to do is drop the guilt. They get surprised. They tell me, what is this, Swamiji? If I drop my guilt, I will start smoking more. What are you talking? You say, drop my guilt. No. Only when you drop your guilt, only when you are free from your past, Guilt is from past. Only when you are free from your past, you will have enough of energy to change your future. As long as you carry the guilt, you will project only your past into future. Understand? When you carry the guilt, you already decide you can't change your future. If you have the confidence that you can change your future, you will not carry the guilt. The moment you carry the guilt, you decide, you take it for granted, I can't change my future, I am going to go only in this way. That is why you carry the guilt. There is a beautiful character described in Ramayana, Vali. The story says, anybody who faces the Vali will lose half of their power and the half of the power will go to the Vali. If you stand in front of him to oppose him, Half of your power will go to Vali. Same way, if you stand in front of your past to fight with him, half of your power will go to him. Your guilt will suck half of your energy. Understand, all your negativity has got only one power which is supplied by you by having faith on that negativity. That's all. All your negativity has got only one power that is supplied by you by having faith on that negativity. When you decide, I have to fight to drop my smoking, you give power to smoking to fight with you. You give half of your power, then you start fighting. It's almost like you fight with your shadow. You will never win. You will never win. Again and again and again you can see the deeper the guilt, you will commit the same mistake again. 
the more strongly you take the vow, I will not become angry next time, more you will become mad. The more stronger the vow, more madness. The more strongly you decide, I will stop smoking, more quickly you will pick up in your hands. Because the thought is there continuously. You will project your past into the future continuously. As long as you try to fight with your past, you are in unconsciousness and you will project the same past into the future. Be very clear. More the guilt, same mistake. You can see by guilt you will never be able to overcome any mistake. Any mistake you can never overcome by guilt. Because when you are having the guilt, you are under the clutches of the past. So naturally, future will not listen to you. Future will not listen to you. Drop from the past. Come to the present moment. Come to the present moment. When you come to the present moment, naturally you will see your future is available to you. Your future is available to you. As long as you live based on the past, naturally you will see the past will automatically penetrate the future. Instead of you living the future, past will be living the future. Past will be living the future. A small thing you understand, a very simple thing. It is from this moment, next moment takes birth. If you believe in this moment that you can't drop some habit because it is past, naturally you can't drop it in the future. So, coming out of the past, coming to the present moment, you will start having a new understanding about the future. You will start having a new realization about the future. One more thing. When you sincerely penetrate the present moment, the eternity, the present moment, the time shaft stops moving. Time shaft stops moving. Somebody asks Buddha, Buddha, what's your age? He just remains silent. They ask him again, Buddha, tell me what's your age? He says, what can I say? Eternity is the only word I can say. In the ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna declares, the Rajaviti Rajaviti Yoga, Krishna says, O oh Arjuna, the same science is delivered by me to Sun God, to Ishwagu, and now to you. Arjuna gets shocked. Arjuna says, what are you talking? You are just 40 years old. But, but Sun God and Kishwag are all 5000 years old. How can you say, you Krishna, you gave this knowledge to Sun God? Krishna says, Arjuna, you don't understand what I say. Time shaft never moves when you penetrate the present moment. When Krishna says, I gave the same signs to Sun God. He is not telling the lie. Please be very clear. He is telling the truth. When you actually enter into present moment, you just become past, present and future. You experience a different space. The problem is we have experienced only the, the horizontal line of the time shaft. Past, present and future. We know only the horizontal line of the time shaft. But if you come to the present, if you just stay in the present moment, you will experience a different dimension, what we call vertical dimension. The vertical dimension, in vertical dimension, there is no time, there is no past, there is no future, it is eternity. That is what we call enlightenment. That is what we call enlightenment. The man who has experienced the past, the past, present and future, the vertical, the horizontal shaft and the vertical shaft, 
he is the person who is enlightened. According to me, the class itself denotes, denotes the horizontal shaft and the vertical shaft of time. The Christ is the person who has dropped from the horizontal shaft and experienced the vertical shaft. Christ is a person who has experienced the vertical shaft, the different time, different space, a different being, who has dropped from the horizontal shaft. He is dead in the horizontal shaft, but he is always alive in the vertical shaft. When you die in the horizontal shaft, you resurrect in the vertical shaft. That is what is shown by the incidences, crucifixion and resurrection. It has got a philosophical meaning, a deep philosophical meaning. The crucifixion and resurrection has to be understood. When you die in this horizontal shaft, horizontal space of past, present and future, when you die in this horizontal line, you will experience a vertical line, which is different space, timeless, spaceless zone, what we call as Chidakasha. What we call as Chidakasha in Sanskrit. When you experience that consciousness, you become Christ. That is why again and again our masters declare it is eternity, it is eternity, it is eternity. All our idea of time and the past and the future is just an idea. It is not reality. When you get even the very small glimpse of present moment, you will understand the future and the past. If you can experience the present moment, the experiencing present moment is what I call meditation. You see, for meditation, you don't need to do anything differently. People come and ask me, Swami, is meditation an extraordinary thing? I tell them, according to me, meditation is the most ordinary thing. Nothing else is necessary. If you are aware how you are sitting, how your body is, what you are doing, what you are listening, just the present moment, the awareness of the present moment, can lead you to the meditation, can put you into the present moment, can give you the glimpse of vertical space of the time shaft. One glimpse can change your whole life. Just one glimpse. But the difficulty is, because it is so simple, we miss it again and again. If you are asked to do something complicated, you will never miss it. Because anything which is complicated gives ego satisfaction. Anything very complicated gives you the ego satisfaction. I have seen in India people walking from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill to have the last darshan in Tirupati. In so many hills, people walk uphill, people go around the hills, but they can never sit silently for 10 minutes. Ask them to sit silently. No. They can't sit. You can sit with anybody. You can't sit with yourself. You can sit with anybody. But you can't sit with yourself. Sitting with yourself, what I call meditation. If you can, sit with yourself without even having thinking or any words in your mind you will experience the glimpse of time shaft. When you experience, naturally, the future will be under your control. People come and ask me, Swamiji, can you predict my future? I tell them, I can change your future. Why do you bother about predicting the future? Don't bother about predicting the future. There are thousands of fools sitting and predicting the future continuously. Go to India under every banyan tree, one guy will be sitting with a parrot. The parrot himself doesn't know about his future. That is why he's under the cage. But you people go and sit there in front of the parrot and ask about your future. 
and that guy himself don't have a house. He is homeless, sitting under the banyan tree. He will guide you when he will build your house. That is what is predicting the future. Don't bother about predicting the future. Future is actually under your control. When I say, again your mind plays again. Swami speaks nicely, but these are all not practical. I am a Grihastha, these are all not for me. He is an enlightened person, he is a Swami, he can talk all these things, this is not for us. You know, your mind knows all cunning methods to escape from present moment. Understand? Just like any being in the planet Earth, your mind has also its own instinct to survive. So it gives enough of confusion, enough of misunderstanding, enough of doubts, so that it can keep you under its control. It can keep you under its control. That is the reason, again and again and again, you are in the clutches of the past or the future. Experience the present. You will experience a different dimension of your being. In the first level, you get the power to see the future. In the next level, you get the power to change the future. In the third level, you understand there is no past and future. In the first, you start seeing the future. In the next, in the intellectual level, you start seeing the future. In the emotional level, you get the power to change the future. That is what I say. Shakti to make your dreams into reality. In the third level, you get the buddhi. The reality itself is the dream. The whole reality is your dream. That's a beautiful story. A great Zen master, an enlightened master, he wakes up from the bed early morning and starts sleeping suddenly. Starts sleeping. Disciples are all surprised. What happened? Master, what happened to you? You are an enlightened person. Enlightened person is not supposed to cry. You cannot cry. What happened to you? Why are you weeping? Master says, No, no. I dreamt as if I became butterfly last night. The disciples ask, What is there in that? After all, I dream. Forget about it. Now you have become all right. You are here. Why do you bother about dream? Forget. Drop it. Why are you crying for that? Master says, no, I don't understand whether I, I dreamt that I became butterfly or that butterfly is now dreaming that it has become a master. <laughs> whether I dreamt I became butterfly or that butterfly is dreaming now that it has become master. I do not know. I am not able to understand. That is why I am sleeping. Understand one thing, there is no guarantee that you are sitting and listening to my discourse. There is every chance it can be one more dream. There is no scale. People tell me, no, no, Swamiji, I can pinch and see. No, in the dream also you can pinch yourself and say it is not a dream. So there is no guarantee. There is every chance you may be sitting in the dream and listening to my discourses, there is nothing sure that you are in making state. When your conscious level raises to the third level, to the upper level, you understand whatever is so-called reality is nothing but your dreams. The person who realizes whatever is whatever you think as reality is nothing but dream. He is the one we call Avakant, the Buddha. Buddha means Avakant. There is only two kind of people in the world. One is Buddha, another one is Buddha. That's all. <laughs> Either you are Buddha or Buddha. There is no third level. Either you are Avakant or you are wrapped in the darkness. When you are, when you experience the present moment, even one glimpse can give you 
the taste of different space in your being the taste of different space in your energy understand these are the three levels when you touch the time shaft just for one glimpse you get the power to see the future when you penetrate it little bit you get the power to change the future when you penetrate the time shaft totally you realize the past future idea itself is dream in such a miracles should lead you to beyond miracles you can start searching for miracles many people come and ask me swami ji we want to do some miracle it's a usual thing anywhere i go please swami ji do some miracle how much you tell the people no doing miracle is nothing that is not a real thing just materializing something or teleporting something is not a real miracle transforming the human lives is the greatest miracle how much you tell but people again want to watch something people again want to have something when you have the craving when you start mongering for mysteries you will miss the mystery of mystery which is god please be very clear when you start searching only for miracles you miss the greatest miracle the whole existence the greatest miracle is existence if you start searching something only some small things are miracle if you start thinking only few things are miracle you will miss the greatest miracle which is universe which is the great existence understand don't miss the great miracle which is existence which is universe the divine so in such a miracles is good path to start good place to start but bad place to end right place to start a wrong place to end so let you as such for miracles lead you to the energy which is miraculous itself let it lead you to the space where we experience the greatest miracle the whole existence the prabancha the universe ramana maharshi says beautifully the blood becoming blood in your body is the greatest miracle but we take all these great miracles for granted and search for something else search for some other miracles understand and look a little deeply come to the present moment you will understand the whole universe is nothing but a miracle the whole universe is the greatest miracle you will experience the greatest miracle which we call universe so let you experience the glimpse of the present moment let you experience the glimpse of the present moment in your being in your space and let you experience the bliss eternal bliss nityananda thank you and a little bit more how to stay in the present and how to penetrate the present can you explain it wonderful question i'll repeat the question she asks can you elaborate more can you explain little bit more how to live in the present moment you see a simple technique very one single line technique live in inside your boundary that's all just live inside your boundary you know where your boundary ends are you, are you aware of your boundary uh, i don't know it depends upon person to person i guess you see what you think as your boundary as on now your body surely not more than that don't think you are atman unless you realize you are atman you are not atman If you think you are Atman, you miss the whole thing. You are Atman has to be realized. 
not to be thought as on now you know only one thing you are body this is what is your boundary start living inside that boundary start living inside the boundary people ask me people ask me swami ji should be renounce to become enlightened i tell them you don't need to renounce anything which you have just renounce what you don't have that is enough <laughs> the future is you don't have the future now in your hand just renounce that that is enough the past and the future you don't have renounce what you don't have that is enough live what you what, what you have the present moment you see the body the body is what you have now this is your boundary start living inside your boundary just a minute i will finish this answer then you can question we always create a next doubt swami ji if i start living inside my body stop thinking about the future how will i chronologically plan my day to day activity i tell you an important thing to plan your day to day activity your chronological planning never takes your energy never sucks your energy 99% of your energy is sucked by psychological worry not by chronological planning if you just do the chronological planning you will never feel drained you will never feel stressed out but 99% of your energy is sucked wasted just by psychological worry start living in the present moment whenever you remember when you are driving the car if you remember suddenly do only one thing how your hands are holding the steering how comfortably you are sitting just feel how your legs are placed how your body is just witness what is happening inside your body what is happening inside your mind just be in the present moment whenever you remember again and again and again when you are walking when you are sitting when you are talking when you are eating when you are doing things again and again be in the present moment you will see you will have the glimpse of time shaft yes please your question you answered it <laughs> <laughs> thank you just a question yes how do you drop guilt from the past mm-hmm. understand one thing ha uh, sorry uh, uh, he asks how to drop the guilt from the past on simple story you need to understand there was a great rishi doing tapasya in the forest he is doing tapasya he has not become enlightened one one night midnight one thief came to his house his ashram and asked for a place to stay for that night the rishi doesn't know he is a thief he said please well, uh, come and stay he gave the place he gave the food everything next day morning the thief is leaving the ashram he said oh swami ji i am very grateful for you you helped me in the midnight i am grateful please um, bless me i am now leaving then the rishi asked who are you what you are doing he declared i am a thief yesterday night only i i was stolen from the palace and i was escaping you gave me the place and saved me thank you he told and left now the rishi started feeling guilty he started praying to god intensely oh god please forgive me i have done such a big sin i gave food and shelter for a thief how big sin it is he started weeping profusely asking god to forgive him suddenly he heard a voice from above that voice is also weeping profusely the rishi asked Oh God, why are you weeping? I am weeping. I have done a sin. Why are you weeping? God says, "You have given food and shelter for him only one day. You say that is a sin. I am giving for three sixty five days. What do I? Where can I go and wash my sin? Understand? The moral of the story is only you have the idea, saint and sinner. God never." has got the idea 
society rubber stamps you as a saint or as a sinner. All the rules are created for the harmonious living. Please understand. All the rules are created. What for? To live a harmonious way. You will not kill me so that I will not kill you. Both of us will live happily. <laughs> that is the basic understanding. In course of time, it has become a law. That's all. So all rules, all regulations are created to live a harmonious, happy life. That's all. But the moment you internalize the rules, the moment you take them seriously, beyond the understanding, see as long as you follow the rules with understanding, your life will be happy. When you start following the letter instead of spirit, you start creating the guilt. If you want to go beyond the law, if you want to escape from the law, do only one thing. Drop the spirit, catch the letter. You can simply escape from the law. <laughs> when you catch the letter, leaving the spirit, you can legally go beyond the law. You can legally go beyond the law. Whenever you catch the spirit, you never fall in guilt. Whenever you catch the letter, you fall in guilt. There was a small incident which happened in a South Indian monastery. In that monastery, there was a pet cat. There was a cat. That Swami used to love that cat very much. He used to take care of that cat. Whenever morning he does puja, the cat will come and disturb his puja. It will drink the milk and run around. It will create disturbance. So one day that Swami decided, before starting the puja, he told the disciples, I come to catch the cat and cover it with a basket. Then I will start the puja. So they caught the cat and covered it. He started the puja. Every day before starting the puja, he used to instruct, catch the cat. They will catch the cat, cover it with basket, then puja will start. By and by, by and by, by and by, one day the master also died and the cat also died. Disciples are now in a big trouble without cat how to do puja. <laughs> they thought how to worship, how to do the worship without cat. So they sent for a person to get, get some cat at least from forest. They brought the cat, covered it with basket, then puja started. And after a few days, getting cat has become a big difficulty. Every day how will you get one, one new cat? And naturally, Getting cat has become a big difficult. Finally the disciples said, you see, it has become Kali Yuga, Iron Age. When you can't get the cat, how can we do puja? All right, stop the puja. <laughs> Whenever you miss the spirit and catch the letter, you do the same mistake. So whenever you have the guilt, look a little deep. Look a little deeply. You will be catching the letter, leaving the Spirit. Don't leave the spirit. Don't catch the letter. Actually, master is the finger pointing to the moon. Master, enlightened master is finger pointing to the moon. If you see the moon, you will exactly realize or you get the benefit of the master. What far you go to the master to see the moon only. He is the finger pointing to the moon. If you see the moon, you are enlightened. You are you are really achieved what has to be achieved. But the problem is, you don't see the moon. You catch hold of his finger and hand. You catch hold of his finger and hand. When you catch hold of when you catch his finger and hand, naturally you also miss the moon. Because you are catching and hanging, the hand will change. The next generation also will miss the moon. Next generation also will miss the moon. Whenever you catch the spirit, you will never create guilt. When you catch the letter, you will always have guilt. I always tell people, don't catch Nityananda, catch Nityananda. Catch Nityananda. Catch the spirit, catch the energy, not the form. I always tell people, when you imbibe the eternal bliss, Nityananda, you will see Nityananda will be there. When you stop imbibing the energy, you will naturally 
Even if the farm is there, you will miss it. You will not have it. In your life, in the Shastra, in the Vedanta, see the Rishis are such a courageous people. Rishis are the only people on the planet Earth who declared their literatures can be updated. All messiahs, all masters have not accepted that their words can be updated. Rishis have declared Smritis can be updated. There are two kinds of scripture in Vedanta, Shruti and Smriti. Shruti means the literature which speaks about Atma Jnana, Upanishad. That is the ultimate. There is a second kind of literature, Smriti, which says about day to day life, the social law. Our rishis are so bold, they declare Smriti can be updated day by day after every yuga. You see, the Smriti, Smriti means the day to day law. If you catch hold of the day to day law, that only creates the guilt. Don't get caught by the day-to-day -day law. Understand and update the Smriti. When the psalm phrase can be updated, why not Smriti? <laughs> when you stop updating, you stop growing. Freedom is the basic condition for growth. Our Rishis are clearly declared Smritis can be updated. One more thing. Where is the rule? What is right and wrong? Tell me. In some place, in some country, in some religion, vegetarianism is the rule. In some other country, non-veg is the rule. In some place, this is right. In some place, uh, this is wrong. You see, what is food for somebody is poison for the other person. So, the morality is supposed to be based on consciousness, not on conscience. If it is based on conscience, it is just skin deep. It is just skin deep. Please be very clear. Of course, I don't say go and do all the mistakes, no. But I tell you, any morality should be based on understanding, not on fear and greed. If it is based on the hell and heaven concept, you will miss the whole thing. You will miss the whole thing. I always tell people, morality should be based on consciousness, consciousness, not based on conscience. See, for children, you need to tell, if you don't do this, I won't give you candy. If you do this, I will beat you. For children, it is okay, based on fear and greed. But even after growing, if your morality is based on fear and greed, you are immature, you are not grown. Stand up. It is time to prove you are grown up person. Don't carry the same mental setup. It is time that your morality should be based on maturity and consciousness, not based on hell and heaven concept, not based on the idea of fear and greed. How long you can have your morality based on fear and greed? No, you can never. So come out. I always tell people, I don't believe in conscience, I believe in consciousness. Conscience is a poor substitute for consciousness. Consciousness is natural, conscience is societal. Conscience is given to you by society. If you are born and brought up in a Vaishnavic family, non veg is a great sin for you. If you are born and brought up in a Islam family, non veg is a usual thing for you. So it is just societal, not natural. So drop all your foolish guilt. Again and again understand, the very understanding is enough. Do you say, Swamiji, I understand fire will burn, but again and again I have temptation to put my hand. You don't say that. When you understand fire will burn, you drop. You keep yourself away from fire. Understand, guilt is just foolishness. And naturally you can keep yourself away from it. Thank you.